Good morning. <clears throat> As I was coming down from Pikeville this morning, I saw a church sign that said, Is God your fortress or is he your last resort? Uh, we and the Gideons have found that a lot of people have found God as their last resort. They have reached rock bottom in their lives. They don't know what, what else to do. They, have, they, they stumble across a copy of God's Word. And when reading that Word, they realize the shortcomings in their lives, and therefore they come to realize that they need God and Christ in their lives. So their last resort is their best one, their best one. So this morning I just want to get, take a little time to, to explain to you a little bit about the Giddens. Most of you know who we are. Uh, we're we're born-again business and professional men who have a, a strong belief in the salvation of men and women, boys and girls. And we do this by placing and distributing Bibles throughout the world. We place Bibles in hospitals, nursing homes. We pass them out on college campuses. We pass them out to fifth graders. We pass them out on sidewalks at the schools. We pass them out at, 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 to military personnel. You see, we try to cover every possibility where people can get a copy of God's Word and, and come to realize that that's where their hope, it, it, their hope resides. Well, what difference does it make whether we do this or not? Well, I've just told you what difference it makes. It makes a difference in life and death, spiritual life or spiritual death. So we just want to hang on to that and realize that I'm not going to that, that the Gideons are placing these in such a way that it will help people. And I'm not here to glorify the work of the Gideons in any way. I'm here to glorify God because of what He's doing through the Gideons International and the way He is leading us to this, through this ministry. It is a, it's a special ministry. And if anybody here would like to th know more about it and join the Gideons, I'll be glad to talk to you. Isaiah 55, 11 tells us, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. And folks, it is prospering. I, I got a little statement here that we're supposed to read about China. Now everybody knows the situation in, in the Republic of China and how that's, that country has been going. Getting International is legally, legally distributing Scripture in China. To date, has distributed more than 2.8 million copies in 14 different provinces. These, these scriptures are distributed by a team from international headquarters and by business, Christian-owned businesses in China. So you see, the door is open and, the, and God is letting us take advantage of the opportunity to reach out to those people because there are folks over there who really, really, really want God in their lives, and they're taking advantage of the opportunity to read God's Word. So we just praise God for all that He's doing in places like China. What difference does it make to somebody who's contemplating suicide? What difference does someone to someone who's in the hospital and not knowing what their, what their next day or next hour is going to bring? What about somebody who's going to have some tests done at the doctor's office, not knowing what they will result in. This is why we place uh, Bibles and Testaments in places like hospitals and nursing homes, because these people are in places where they need to have some reassurance and they can get the reassurance from God's Word. Well, right now, Gideon's organized 197 countries and we print scriptures in 99 languages. Last year, 84,600,000 copies of God's Word were placed or distributed. Well, that's, 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 that sounds like a big number. But I'm here to tell you that that is not all the requests that we have. We have to deny requests because of the lack of funds to, 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 to take care of the Scripture needs. During a distribution in Russia, some Gideons were, were being escorted by the chief of police in his car to an elementary school where they were going to pass out some, some uh, testaments to the school kids there. Well, they were on this road, and they drove and they drove and then they passed the school where they were destined. Well, I think if I'd been in their situation, I'd have gotten a little bit nervous in Russia with a chief of police driving me around. Anyway, they went on down the road a little bit further and they came to another school. And the chief of police stopped here. And they said, Chief, why did we pass the school where we were supposed to be and ended up here? 
He said, this is where my kids go, and I want to make sure they get a copy of God's Word. See the difference in Russia since 1989. That is just an indication of the way people are hungry for God's Word and the way that, that we're being asked to make sure that everybody gets a copy of God's Word who desires it. Well, you got, you, you got an insert there that I gave you this morning and it gives you an opportunity to make, make a contribution to the Gideons. But I'm not here to ask for your money. I'm here to make sure that you are aware of what's going on with the Gideons throughout the world. But we depend on your support to do this. Well, you can pray for the salvation of those who are reading Scriptures, but because some of those people up in Bledsoe County Correctional Facility, some of those people may be here in Sequatchie County Justice Center. They need prayer just as much as you and I need prayer. And that's what we're all about. And we want you to pray for the Gideons who are serving in such far flung, so many far flung countries. We have Gideons who will ride a bicycle 20 miles with a 40 pound box of scripture on that bicycle to make sure that a school receive, the students at a school receive a copy of God's Word. That's the dedication that some of those people over there have. And it's up to us to make sure that they have sufficient copies of God's Word to make sure that those kids can get a copy. We've heard of situations where kids would, would stand in line all day long just to get a copy of God's Word. And when they got, to the, got up to the, where the, the Bibles were, the Gideon would have to say, I'm sorry, I don't have any more. Now that is sad, especially when those kids are, are hungry for that Word. And sometimes that Testament or that Bible is the only textbook that they have. So the Word of God is important to everybody. And we just want to make sure that we can, can, that everybody gets a copy of God's Word. Well, we found one of our best programs here in the Valley is, is our Gideon Card Bible Program. This is a program whereby you can purchase Bibles and send a, a card to someone to, in memory of someone or to tell somebody that you're thinking about them and that you're praying for them and that you wish them to know that they placed a Bible somewhere in the world in their name. This is, a, this is a memorial to people that may never, other be, never be covered some other way. And sometimes people like to annually memorialize people this way. So, uh, like I said, there's a rack back there. I need to update that and bring you a new one. But there's a rack back there that's got cards, uh, cards in it and envelopes so you can, you can make your donation for that. And they're, they're available in the funeral homes. I'll tell you one more testimony. Uh, Marcus Riggins, Patterson, New Jersey, was a drug addict, an alcoholic, and a convicted murderer and a whole lot, whole lot of other things in his life that, were, that was wrong. One night in Patterson, New Jersey, he had an encounter with a drug dealer, and as a result, the drug dealer lay dying on the floor. When, he saw, when Marcus saw him lying there, he panicked and he ran, knowing that for the first time in his life, that monster had come alive. That monster within Marcus had come alive because of what he had done there. He was ashamed of what he had done. He called his mother and arranged to meet her at Newark. His mother and sister took him to the airport motel and rented a room for him. Sitting there in that motel room, Marcus was just totally in the grip of fear because of what had happened and what was going on in his life. All of his life had been spent in prison or he was being shot at or shooting at somebody else. He was full of hatred and he was full of bitterness. He was a Muslim. And he had re resented Christians, both white and black. The whites had it all and the blacks were standing in his way. As he sat there in that motel room that night, on the edge of the bed trying to watch a TV program, he couldn't focus on what he was watching. So he got up and he started to just pace around the room. And those of you who have been in hotels or motels know that there's a book in that room somewhere that says, get in place, Holy Bible, get in place. And so Marcus found one of those. And he began to read it. Marcus had a terrible drug and alcohol habit. Let me go back just a little bit. He had a terrible alcohol and drug uh, problem. He consumed about $400 to $500 of heroin per day. 
He'd drink five or six pints of alcohol. That's how bad he was. But when he started reading this Bible, he started realizing that changes could be made. As he read Deuteronomy 32.10, he found him in a desert land. Well, Marcus was definitely in the desert. But that's when something started to change in him. His plane came and he, and he fled from Newark. Ten to two hours later, he got off the airplane at, at, at Atlanta, Georgia, and took a bus down to the Ilke, near the Ilke Finoke Swamp where he'd been born and raised. Well, while he was there, he, he, he just started realizing the mess his life was. Because, but he had cried out to God, and so he said, God, if you're there, you're there, please keep me from committing suicide. Please keep me from committing homosexuality from being homosexual. Keep me in your arms and watch out for me and help me to rise above my situation. He said, I'm going to surrender. So if you're there, you'll take care of this. Six weeks later, after Marcus accepted Jesus Christ that day near the Oki Finoki Swamp, took him back to Patterson where he was tried and he was sentenced to the state prison. But God was still working in Marcus's life. Marcus became a spiritual leader for those, those people in prison. And this is all because of the, what he had read in the Bible that he found in that hotel room that day. He's the pastor of the Reconciliation Church of Christ. Now that is a 180 degree change, is it not? But Marcus found the right book. He found his salvation by reading a copy of God's Word that had been placed in a hotel room. You know, he said he's remained faithful to his ministry, but sometimes he'd like to leave, but the people that he is ministering to depend on him to help them get through their situation because they're all former drug addicts and, and, and ex-cons, ex-prisoners. So he has a mission of his own that he's performing there. I might need to advise you that the tax deductible gift that you give today will go to make some changes in people's lives. Each Bible has the potential of reaching 2,300 people in a six-year life expectancy. Ten such Bibles can reach 23,000 people in the six-year period. But if only one Bible reaches only one person, it's worth the investment. It's worth it. I need to remind you that, that this church is an extension, that we're an extension of your church. We're, we're missionary for y'all. As such, we have access to places where y'all can't go. You may not be permitted. Every, every day, we have a prayer calendar that we use. We pray for every pastor in every church which we serve in our area. That's 103 churches and pastors. We pray for Brother Tom and you, the church, on the fourth of each month. Because we realize that it's because of you that the ministry in which we serve has accomplished what has accomplished over these oh, this 100 years plus. So we just praise the Lord for what you're doing. Well, again, I say, what difference does it make whether you support the Gideons or not? Just look around you sometime and see somebody who, who may have never had a copy of God's Word in their life. And if you see them again after they've had a copy, you'll see the difference that's come about in their lives. Those of you who are working in the jail ministries may see this coming about. So I want to thank you for your time and for the opportunity to be here this morning. And I've got time to get back up to Pikeville and at Pikeville Methodist Church and have, have a little, little worship time with them. But I just appreciate you so much for what you all are doing down here. And we just look forward to you all participating in our ministry throughout the world. And I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir, and for the ministry of the Gideons. 
I'm just curious, how many here have been a recipient of a Gideon Bible? If you're not, I know you've seen them every motel you go to. So, thank you, sir. I have asked uh, Ronnie Brown if uh, he will be at the back, and DJ is not here. If somebody will be at the other exit and help Ronnie for the offering of the Gideon. This is a very important ministry, so you have the opportunity to give. Uh, this morning, our hymn of invitation is Here I Am, Lord, page 593. Please stand. <laughs> 